as it relates to um, Dwayne Bravo and Kyron Pollard, two significant members of the West Indies uh, limited over squads in recent times. Were you given a directive not to ch choose these two? No, nobody, nobody will be able to do that to me. I, I won't be there. Um, I never spoke to anybody. I spoke to the president only a, a, a last, is it when he, when he came to South Africa the other day. Mm -hmm. uh, the point is that Simon let people understand that we have been at the bottom rung of the ladder for the last eight years or more. We're the same players, we recycling people all the time. The point is, is that we now have, we try to see if we can change things. It's quite obvious that, you know, picking a West Indies team is not easy. It's a very difficult job. Because if you look at the stats that our players have, they're not really, you know, wonderful. So we'll be picking players averaging 20s and 25, some even 19. And, um, you know, and no, and in, you, in other countries, players are not being selected for even better stats than that. So we're starting from scratch. We know that, you know, it's obvious that um, uh, Mr. Bravo and, and Pollard might think, well, you know, it, it, it's very tough on them. Yes, it's. It's tough in the sense that um, there were a lot of discussion. We had two days of discussion, um, the selectors, not only myself. We have three, three other selectors and the captain. And there were, you know, very, very strong um, arguments for players. And then we came up with what we thought would, would be a pretty good team. The point is that it's not a situation where these guys are being wiped away. They have a chance of playing again for the West Indies. There's no doubt about that. Um, but we, want, we have a new captain, and hopefully that um, he'll get the support that is needed. And then we, we're putting a, 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 a very good performance. Um, it is difficult in the sense that we have, we think that it's important that any captain, it may be a test match or one day, have a settled side. We want people who will be there and there often, and that's a word, something that we're sending out to all players. Yeah, we have no axe to grind. I don't dislike anybody. Um, we want the best for West Indies. And, um, and once we can, you know, it's, it's going to take, it's going to take some doing because, you know, we, we don't have a, a great set of players to choose from. What we have is some good young players coming to even from the under 19s. And we, we need to reward them when they, when they've done well. And, um, it's obvious that some people might, you know, miss out in, in, at some stage, but we will try to pick the best team at all times. Well, you, you mentioned about um, some fairly ordinary averages, but that applies to the likes of uh, Darren Sammy and Andre Russell, um, who've been around the circuit for a little while, but have similar averages to, say, um, Bravo and Pollard. How did you make the choice between? Well, I think if you look at Pollard, uh, Sammy does have some very good stats. Um, a good, he's good tactics. He help people along, and um, I think he'd be good for for young for young Jason. Um, I think, I actually think that Andrew Ross and I spoke to him about it. That I think he could be one a fine all rounder if he just. You know, applies himself. Uh, he's got the he's got all the credentials to be a terrific all round. I thought that you know, my uh, well, we thought that probably he would he would he would do well in a test match coming in later on. Who could, you, you know being able to um, get us some big scores at the end there to to galvanize him galvanize into better totals. He can field. He, he, he's fairly lively when he bowls. Um, I think he, he has a bit of a knee problem, but we're hoping that that will clear up at some time soon. Do you, um, think it's a, do you think it's a case with Andre Russell that he needs to understand his role as a bowler a little bit better than, than he does at the moment? Yes, I think, I think he, we have to, to speak to him and say, well, listen, what you want to do? I've already had a word with, word with him. Um, but I, I think these guys, too, Doing well in the in the in the one in the these one day leagues and people want them to play and they have to make a choice. Um, 
and I hope that they would understand that we don't mind them playing wherever they have to play. But West Indies, West Indies cricket should be first. And when we're, whenever we have cricket, we'd like them to play for us and play for us as often as well, as the other countries are doing. You mentioned the, the new captain, Jason Holder, and that Darren Sammy would be good in advising him and some of the other players. In your deliberations about leaving Bravo and Pollard out, is that in an effort to give maybe Holder a little more control over the side? No, I, I don't think that that... They, I must tell you, they... they there were very long discussions. It wasn't easy. It, it wasn't easy to, to to leave out those two guys. It was as a discussion that went on and on and on. And um, but you know, in the end, we we thought that we have so many all rounders that we you know we it, it was like an over you know overburden of of, of all rounders. If you notice, it, we have quite a few all rounders in in a, in, a, in our side. We were trying to see if we can introduce some new faces, um, you know, and as far as I'm concerned, we're getting there. We have, I think we have a good all-round, good one-day side, mm. I oh. think, and I think the test cricket, the te it's going to take some time because you take a little longer time to play good test cricket, but you can see some green shoots. Um, we we could have, we could have saved the test series, I suppose. I thought at one stage we, we could have won the last one if we had batted a, 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 with a little bit more, um, you know, intelligence and so on. And and we were doing quite well at 180 yard or 60 yard for two or three. We were on top of things, and we just sort of crashed out of it. We have to get our players thinking big, batting for long periods, batting from session to session, getting, you know, um, better um, putting things together where you know we have better partnerships and so on. So there are a lot of things that we need to learn at the moment, and um, we're gonna we try to mix the old with the new. And that 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 is, all we are doing as selectors is trying to get West Indies cricket from the bottom rung of the ladder further up. New Zealand is doing quite well. Why can't we? We have we have players just as good. Yeah. Um, one oh, of your better. good players is also a senior player, and that, of course, is the opener, Chris Gale, who, after the T20 internationals against the South Africans, was quite strident in his comments about um, the omission of Bravo and Pollard, and he accused the selectors of being ridiculous. He also suggested there was victimization. That's from one of your senior players. How do you respond to, A, yeah. those charges, and, B, the fact that Gale was so, um, shall we say, open with his comments? Well, I'm very disappointed with Chris if he says that because he's somebody I respect, I uh, have a lot of time for. Um, but we are selectors. He's not a selector. And um, he might think it's victimization. We, we have, I have nothing against any, anybody because, you know, quite a few of the other players are playing. Uh, why are they not victimized? Uh, we were trying to get a, 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 the best team out there. And um, I know that it's obvious that people might think it is, but it isn't. Okay. We will, we will continue to pick people who we think um, putting in the effort. Good. I'm not saying that these guys, but we have to try and get out of that number eight position. All right. The people that right. Are, there are at the bottom of us are, are Zimbabwe and, and Bangladesh. And we've been there now, Simon, for how long? Too long. Um, I'm going to ask you to. Saying. So to we have to try different things. People are going to will feel disappointed in, in things that you do, but you have to try and get the system where we 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 have to try people, younger people. You know, we have to try people, the people who are performing well in our cricket. We have to reward them for doing so. All right, I'm going to ask you to, to hold the line, Clive Lloyd. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back with the uh, chairman of Selectors in just a moment. Do not adjust your TV set. Something more is about to happen. Something more bold. Something more striking. Unveiling the new look of Guinness.
mighty Manchester United will fancy their chances against relegation strugglers QPR. But of late, the hoops have been defiant on their home patch at Loftus Road. It's QPR, Manchester United, live Saturday, January 17th at 10 a.m. 11 ECT on Digicel Sports Match 2. On the high after a world record chase of the Wanderers, the Windies now take aim at inflicting a serious whitewash over the shell shot frontiers. Live from Durban, the third and final Trent International Tour in West Indies facing South Africa this Wednesday, 11 a.m., 12 noon EC time on Digicel Sportsman. Brought to you by Digicel. The Lily Whites are closing in on a top four spot, but first they must break. On the high after a world record chase of the Wanderers, the Windies now take aim at inflicting a serious whitewash over the shell shot frontiers. Live from Durban, the third and final Trent International Tour in West Indies facing South Africa this Wednesday, 11 a.m., 12 noon EC time on Digicel Sportsman. Brought to you by Digicel. Breaking into the box, it's Conaguero! Rolled in again for Jack Wilson! Chairman of West Indies Selectors, the former West Indies captain, of course, Clive Lloyd. Um, Clive Lloyd, you surprised a lot of people, I think, with the appointment of Jason Holder as captain of this one-day international team. Um, and I know you say you want to change things around, you've got to give uh, youth its, its, its head, but just ahead of the World Cup, is this not a, a great responsibility for a youngster who is uh, still finding his way at the international level? No, well, I think, I think we had identified Jason long before now. We, we all thought that he was a very level-headed young man. And, um, you know, England's got a new captain too. Um, and the point is, we have a couple of games there to get things together, and I and I, I think that he'll do well. He's improving um, with his bowling. He's a, he can bat, you know. He can field anywhere, um, and I think he's a guy that that people will like. I think you know if he he he'll be able to get that respect because whenever he plays, he gives his all. He's not a guy who's not you know he's proud to wear that that maroon cap. And I think anyway, it's his heart and the, the sea. We we want we we are embarking on a situation where we want players to to understand that they can go and play anywhere else they want. We have no problems with that. But when West Indies uh, when West Indies have um, games to play, we want them to make themselves available. The other countries are doing it. Mm. Why is it that we can't do the same thing? Well, you mentioned Pakistan that England... Do it, the Indians, the Australians, the Englishmen, the New Zealanders, you know, the Sri Lankans. But they are all, all established players, those, those new captains. Owen Morgan for England, for instance, Virat Kohli taking over the side. These are established players, whereas, as I mentioned, Jason Holder is, is still finding his way at the international level. And well, in don't, I know Ian Morgan hasn't really captained England that often. The odd game here, they... The oldest captain, um, the Tridents, he's captain, you know, Barbados. He's, he's, he's done enough in the sense that, you know, if you look at, you look at um, South Africa, Graham Smith is 21 years old, and guys are saying, my God, you know, he's so young and so on. But look, they have the captain for 10 years or more. And um, we're looking to get people there who we feel will take our cricket forward. Good. And, um, and if they do well, and we're hoping that they do, then we have, we have no problems with that. Okay. But it doesn't say to the detriment of, of the, the older players. We want people to be there playing for the West Indies to, to be, make us one of the best teams in the world. We have the talent, and I'm sure that, um, you know, that once we, 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 we've put ourselves in that position where we can support everybody. It doesn't matter who's captain. We want people to go out there and make, make sure that the West Indies do move off the, the, the bottom rung of the ladder. We've um, been there for too long with the same players yeah. over the last, what, 
six, seven years, we'll be trying with the same players and we haven't moved. Why is it that because we, we've decided to change, you know, a system, and not to, not to say that these guys are going to be, they're, they're thrown out and they're not, they won't be able to come back. Once they're doing well, we will find places for them to fit in, to, to make our cricket stronger. Is that why Dwayne Bravo, despite losing the captaincy and his place in the squad, has been given a retainer contract or offered a retainer contract by the board? Well, right, he's been offered because if we didn't think that he was part of our system, we wouldn't do that. You know, we've offered all of the players that we feel that will take our cricket forward um, a retainer. What do you make of the likes of Sunil Narayan, Chris Gale, uh, refusing uh, the retainers? What does that suggest about their well, uh, involvement? The point is, is that uh, Chris has met, said why he, he's done it. Mm -hmm. The point is, you don't have to sign the contract, but the point is, when it comes to playing, and we've asked you to play, and then you make yourself unavailable, well then, that's a different situation. You are offered a contract because we feel that you, you're going to be part of our system. Okay. Um, I just want to ask you, uh, Nicholas Puram, the Trinidad and Tobago wicketkeeper batsman, injured in a car crash last week, but uh, fortunately he's, he's okay. When you talk about making changes, m being bold in changes, is he a part of your thoughts? Well, uh, I, I, there's a fellow Lewis too. Mm -hmm. There's Lewis, there's Puran, there are quite a few. There's a, there's a little left arm spinner. Um, I'm trying to remember his name now. Um, and I think he, you know, they're all guys there who are doing well. Um, we have Pamal from Guyana. I like the, your, your fast, young fast bowler, Mindley. Mm -hmm. I think he has a future. He looked good, he looked, got good action, lively. We have to work with these guys. They're going to be the future of our cricket. And if they're doing well, we have to reward them. We want to, have, we want to change this system that we had before. We cannot just think that we, there's a set of people, because they might be doing well elsewhere, that, they, that they, we want people to be doing well for us. Once you're doing well for us, you will be rewarded. We want, we want the best people to emerge. I know it's going to be problematic in choosing. It's not easy to choose a West Indies team. If you look at our players, sometimes when the the stats go up, I mean, you know, you feel, well, I hope that they change it as quickly as possible. We have batsmen who are in the 20s and the 30s. We had, we had, we had, we had uh, don't forget, huh? Um, are these, these are the selectors that brought back Marlon Samuels, mm -hmm. who was thrown to the to the dogs, more or less. But he's come back now, and he's one of the finest players again in the world. He's gone up in the ratings. We, 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 have, to keep, we have to keep playing these people, giving them a chance to show what, what they have. Um, and but I the, think but isn't, that in, isn't that in direct conflict with maybe the discarding of Pollard and Bravo, you, you, you stuck with a, a Marlon Samuels who had a, a little run of form that was not so good because you recognize his ability. Does that not suggest that your treatment of Pollard and, and Bravo um, is in direct conflict? No, 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 I don't think so. The point is, as we said, they have a chance to come back uh, and, and, and be, be in our squad because there's a lot of cricket that going to be played um, in the not, not next year, year or so. Mm -hmm. um, we have England coming through. <coughs> you know, we have our four-day competition. We have a lot of cricket being played. Once you're playing our competition and you're doing well and you're playing often, that's it. Okay. You will Just a, a be, final... you know, be thought of. It's not, it's not that we're throwing them to, to the dogs. Mm. You know, Marlon has shown that he's He's a class player, and he's come back, and he's, you know, doing extremely well. And I'm glad for that because he's added something to to our team. He's now, you know, solidify his 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 um his position. We want people to go out there and make sure that West Indies cricket is for us, 
and whenever we have our, we want people to be back there playing in our domestic cricket, okay. where the youngsters will be able to have a chance of playing with our great players. A final word on the World Cup. You've chosen your 15-man squad. What are your reasonable expectations for the performance of this side? With the Australians being at home, New Zealand have uh, always been uh, there or thereabouts around the semi-finals area. Um, you look at the Indians who are, are a fairly impressive one-day side, even though there may be a few changes there. What are your expectations for the West Indies? Well, the point is this is 40 years since we won the first one, and I'm hoping that um, we'll be able to emulate that for the one that we did um, we won 40 years ago. We have a new captain. We have some very good players there, and if they play as I said to, the, to their ability to go out there and, and fear no one, we are good as any of those teams out there, and I think that um, we can do well, and I, I hope that we do. Um, but. At least there, there are some youngsters there too who will be getting some, some experience. Uh, and and uh, you are the chairman of selectors, but you are way more than that in, in terms of West Indies cricket. Whilst you are in that job, are you able to, especially on tour, interact with players and, and help them along in, in their process? Oh, yes, I've, I've been in the nets with them. I've helped quite a few people. I've helped Mr. Bravo before when I was technical director. I've helped um, uh, uh, Marlon and um, Gail. And, you know, I do that. If I see things, you know, I will, the players come to me, too. Um, I, I would do that. I, I interact with them. I, there's nobody out there that I dislike or anything like that. Okay. I'm there to see that our cricket get a, make a step forward. That's my aim. Right. I want to, my, if the, when my two years are up, I can see that we have brought, brought some young players on. We are now a force to be reckoned with in the one-day competition and the test, and the test, and the test, and in the test, and the test arena. Right. We have the talent. It's just harnessing that talent and playing cricket that people will admire. Clive Lloyd, uh, you certainly did play cricket that people admired around the world, even if some of them feared your team uh, more than anything else. Thanks a lot for joining us. Pleasure, sir. All right. Uh, Thanks. Clive Lloyd there, chairman of uh, the selectors for the WICB. He says there's no victimization against either Pollard or Bravo. They're looking to renew the West Indies team and their fortunes.